At some point, Barney Yang's name surfaced as someone who had had a previous relationship with Sean Gale. Marnie was a single mother who was very devoted to her children. She was a hardworking woman. She was an intelligent woman. My mom had three jobs at one time. She was a real estate agent. She was an aspiring uh, fitness model. She worked as a cocktail waitress. My mother has always tried her best for us. I wanted to provide my children as much as I possibly could. I didn't ever want them to feel a lack of anything. My brother and I, we played tackle football. My mom was like hardcore football mom. My mother picked up scuba diving as a hobby. She paid for classes for me to take. And that was always fun. She juggled it all. Marnie met Sean at a Bears convention. She was working as a security person at that event and would have had access to uh, some of the celebrities, and Sean was certainly one of those. And I just remember him approaching me, introducing himself just by his first name. I didn't know who he was, and I just kept bumping into him throughout the course of that weekend. I remember him mentioning that he was looking for some investment property because it had come out that I was a real estate broker, and I just remember giving him my business card. About two hours after the event was over, my phone rang, and it was him. We really didn't discuss very much other than what type of property he might have been looking for. We made arrangements to meet. So they meet, they start talking, and they start doing real estate deals together. She was spending a lot of time with Sean because they had this real estate transaction that she was basically brokering. Two months after the murder, the police called in Marnie to answer some questions. I absolutely did not see a problem with, you know, going in and sitting down and talking to them. How you doing? Hi. I'm Marnie. Yes. I'm Detective Chuck Schwartz. Chuck's gonna ask you some basic questions about who you are, where you live, stuff like that. I didn't feel like I needed an attorney. You know, it was pretty much just anything I can do to help. Basically, I just want to find out your association with Sean, how you know Sean, okay. when you first met Sean. I only known him for about six years. We met at a convention. I think I had been given enough advice about um, the fact that everybody that was connected with him was probably going to be questioned at some point. Marty, you know, uh, obviously you know why we're talking about yeah, this, this is about. Probably not too many people out there. Right, they don't know. <laughs> they talked to her for about an hour and a half. Did you know or the extent of his relationship with uh, the victim? I didn't know the extent of the relationship. I know he had told me that, that he had gotten somebody pregnant. And she seemed relaxed and comfortable, sort of with the attitude of, I just want to help. What Marnie doesn't know at this point is that three tips have come into police urging them to look at her. If there's anything else comes up or we have any other information that we get, you know, you don't mind coming back in no, or talking fine. to us? Hopefully. Is this, is this okay? Is this kind of close or no, not too not. far? Okay. After speaking to Marnie, police continue their investigation. The police said they started talking to everyone and they kept hearing a similar story. People who knew Marnie said that she was telling everyone that she was Sean's girlfriend. She bragged about it all the time. She was very proud of it, and she made a lot more out of the relationship than it actually was. Yeah, that was not what I was referring to him as. I don't think the word boyfriend was ever used, really. I asked Sean back in 2009 if Marnie had been his girlfriend, and he emphatically said, no, she was not. He said, not even the craziest stretch of the imagination. But he did admit to me that their professional relationship did get friendly. Night before the murder, what we found out was that Marnie was at Sean Gale's house. They engaged in sexual relations. 
Police issue a search warrant for Sean's house, and after accessing his computers, they drop what must have felt like a bombshell on Sean. That unbeknownst to Sean, Marnie seems to have access to his emails, to his computer, and that all this time, for years, she might have been stalking him online. Investigators believe that Marnie had been tracking Sean and Ronnie. Marnie has denied these claims. And those letters that Sean thought came from Monica, police believe they actually came from Marnie. Marnie Yang discovered through her penetration of his email account, this Polish woman's emails. She would then study them, master the broken English with which the Polish woman spoke, and write the letters in that broken English in an effort to frame her. Police continue to investigate Marnie, but here's the thing. There's no physical evidence tying Marnie to the crime. Now remember, Sean has always maintained his innocence. And finally, after weeks of investigating him, police clear him. Once they do, they have a proposition for him. They want his help on getting information about Marnie. And we're basically telling Sean, we want to set up some wires in your house. We want to see if you can get her to talk about her her involvement. So police bug his house, and then they take positions all around his house. You have to set up safeguards when you build these type of operations. You don't want anybody to get hurt. We basically have to put security up and down stairs. We got coppers hiding in closets just in case things go south. During his conversation with Marnie, he's asking her about these letters that were sent to women he dated. And he's asking her, do you think these letters were sent from the killer? I think it's possible. Yeah, I think this person's a little unbalanced. Got a few screws loose. Now remember, police believe it was Marnie who sent those letters, not Monica. So in their view, she's talking about herself. My whole point, what I'm trying to bring up, anyone who takes someone else's life, there's gotta be some, some really lasting effect that, that... I would imagine so. You have to be a sociopath in its purest form in order to be able to take another person's life. In the end, Marnie admitted to nothing. So one of the things the police do is they start pulling her trash, looking for incriminating information. And they hit some pay dirt there. They find a bank statement that they read, and it says, purchase on her debit card, Ray Rowling's arms. So they call Ray Rowling's arms. And that's when they find out about the book, How to Make a Disposable Silencer, and the fact that she ordered volume one and volume two. She actually went to Home Depot and purchased the items to build a silencer. She's got, you know, the drill, a circular clamp, a one and a quarter inch metal pipe, some PVC piping, and the duct tape, and a hacksaw. So even with these new discoveries, the police still need more information. So they set up another sting operation. And now it's another woman, a so-called psychic, who will upend the investigation. She may be goofy, but she knows how to press record. Do you give your permission for the following conversations to be overheard and recorded? Yes. This overheard will now commence. And what unfolds inside this unassuming Denny's will surprise investigators. Very chilling. It was surreal. GMA fans, Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.